It takes what it takes. Hey, Matt Smith here, all or nothing in real estate. Got a quick podcast for you guys down and dirty on a lot of thoughts I've got going on in my head from being a team leader, being someone that is in the trenches every day, working in this real estate, leading other agents, coaching other team leaders. My thought is it takes what it takes. What is required is required. You can't skip the work. You can't skip the skill. It takes work. It takes effort. It takes the willingness to get punched in the mouth and get up and do it all over again. If you're listening to this podcast, I'm assuming you're in the real estate space. It takes what it takes. You signed up for this. You signed up to be in this amazing career that is also full of its challenges. So I'm going to unpack that in my uh, my thoughts today. It takes what it takes. I'm going to preface all this with, um, that was hopefully a wake-up call, hit you right between the eyes, work's required, get over it. I'll unpack that for you in this uh, in this podcast. But I also think before you, before you leave, because I made you mad, um, there's also want to preface this with some empathy. Right now, agents, it's tough, right? So I understand that it's tough, but I want to wake you up and I want you to actually win in this marketplace. So many people are winning at a high level. And so I'm going to unpack that, give you action action items that you can take, give you, give you things that are actually real that you can work through. So I mentioned it's four against one. So right now as an agent, it's hard. It's tough. Um, you've got so many things against you. It's like you're fighting an uphill battle that you can't win. But you can win. But before before I go into the how you can win, the battle you're fighting, let's actually really unpack this. It's four against one. As an agent, you're fighting against the election. As an agent, you're fighting against the interest rates. As an agent, you're fighting against the war going on in the Middle East. As an agent, you're fighting against probably fourth, but the most important, the gossip and the conversations happening at the water cooler. How many people are playing victim and how many people are saying, woe is me and poor me and it's not fair. Don't get sucked in. People blaming the leads, blaming the economy, blaming whoever they're going to vote for the election, blaming the interest rates. The reality is I understand it's difficult. I get it. I feel for you. I'm in it. I promise you I understand. But the reality is if you don't focus on solutions and all you care about is the problems and you don't actually want to solve any of those problems, you're just whining. So don't let that gossip, that whining overtake your life. I'm going to give you tips and tricks and things that will help you work through this and share and unpack what's working for agents that are winning at a very, very high level. All right, so let's talk about the work that's required. Number one, if I'm an agent right now, what do I need to do to get into action? I'm going rapid fire today. Number one, you need standards. What is your daily minimum standard of activity that you have for yourself? What is the work that is required of you today to win the day today? Not, oh, this week I'd like to kind of sort of do this. If I'd sell, if I sell this this year, that'd be okay. I'd kind of like to sort of make this amount of money specific, detailed. What is the action that you can control that you need to take today to win the day today? And guess what else matters? Nothing until you get that done. And it doesn't have to be anything crazy, but we find excuses not to do the work that is required, especially when we have those four things we're fighting against. It's way easier to go see on social media and see what someone said about the presidential candidate and the debate this and the war that and the interest rate this and so-and-so said this, right? But reality is control what you can control. Control the controllables. What you can control is the activity you choose to do or choose not to do. So how do we develop that daily minimum standard of activity that is required? First and foremost, look at your body of work. Go back the last 90 days, watch your game film, see how many phone calls you made, see how many conversations you had, how many text messages you sent, how many of clients you met with, how many you signed, how many are under contract, and how many you closed. I lost a lot of you right there. Wait a minute, I'm supposed to track my numbers in this business? 
If you want it to be repeatable, duplicatable, scalable, then yes, absolutely you do. But if you don't have those numbers, don't freak out. I've got a framework to get you started. Just be sure that you track as you go. So here's what I'm seeing working for agents that are winning. Their metric, their daily minimum standard of activity starts with something very, very simple that everyone can do. Four two-minute conversations logged in the CRM every day, five days a week. Real estate is a contact sport. How many two-minute conversations are you having with prospects, with leads, with follow-ups, with clients, with friends and family about referrals? How many real estate conversations are you having per day and per week? The more conversations you have, the more stones you turn over, the more opportunities you will get. I'll be honest, 20 conversations a week sounds pretty easy, right? It is. We just find other ways and excuses to talk out of that's not what we need to do. We have this other thing that we can do that's more important. We have this gossip we can talk about. We have this fire from this other client. We have this social media thing that we got to do. And I'm not saying that social media doesn't work. I'm not saying there's not other fires you got to deal with. I understand. Let's go back to how I started. Until you get your daily minimum standard of activity done, nothing else matters. Do the hard shit first. Get your conversations out of the way. Then it makes do your hard shit in the morning. It gets the rest of the day. You got to, it's a breeze. It's easy. Agents, stay with me here. How many of you have had a day where you had the best intentions? I'll do my prospecting this afternoon. You know what? I'll wait till people are off work. I've got a better chance of them picking up the phone. So I'm going to wait to do my calls then. And then you wait and you push it off. You procrastinate. You find other stuff to do that's probably unproductive if we're honest. And then five o'clock comes when you're supposed to make your calls. Well, now you're dealing with a client fire. Now you're dealing with this. Now you're dealing with that. Or you're just tired. You had a rough day. Someone got mad at you, whatever. And you find an excuse not to make those calls. And then you got to do it again tomorrow. Don't negotiate with your goals. Don't negotiate with your standards. It takes what it takes. It takes work. Work is required. On a side note, agents that are winning at an extremely high level, that number is 35 two-minute conversations per week, not 20. That's your information. If you don't have the data, start there. Next, after the work, you got to have skills. You got to have skills. Yes, it takes the will or the willingness to do the work, but you also need to be skilled. The problem with skills is most people misinterpret it and they think I learned skills by going to training. Man, if, Matt, if you would teach me more, I would, I would sell more real estate. The reality is most agents don't need more training. Most agents are actually overtrained. As a matter of fact, you don't get better. You don't gain skills by attending a training. You don't gain skills by attending a training. You get better by putting that training into action. It takes what it takes. Stop skipping the work. Stop looking for something that is the shiny object. You want to get skilled? You Let's find someone that you admire in your office, in your market, that is just really, really good at converting leads or really, really good with the client or you overheard a conversation, you were blown away with a speech they gave, a training they did and go back and look at their last five years journey. I guarantee you they put in work to develop that skill. You see, the good thing about skill, the good thing about this that I'm talking about, everyone can learn it. It is a learned trait. You can, anyone can learn any skill. This is a skill that you can acquire, but it takes the work. You can't skip the work. If you don't believe me, here's a real life example that I that I heard. Now I don't I don't play the guitar, but I've tried to play like my kids' guitar, um, just messing around every now and then, um, like a little toy one. And every time I pick it up and try to play it, it sounds terrible. So I know that there's skill required. So imagine you were you were committed that you wanted to learn how to play the guitar. So you spent all day and night reading every book that you could on how to play the guitar. You watch all these videos, you got all this training and you just digested all this information for days, weeks, months on how to play the guitar. What did that teach you? If you pick up the guitar right now, you're going to be great at the guitar. 
Are you going to play it? And it's going to sound like I play it. It's going to sound like it's out of tune and you don't know what you're doing. Because it's a skill that is acquired over time. And how do you build that skill? Not through training, but through action. Does the training help accelerate your growth path of that skill? Absolutely. But stop using training as an excuse to not do the work. The work is where the skill is built. And so I'll tell you, I know people that play guitars that get paid. I know somebody that was on the road with a very professional um, country singer. If I mentioned his name, you would know him. Got paid to play guitar with him. You know how many lessons he took? You know how many? He, he didn't even know how to read music. Never taken a lesson in his life. But he picked up the guitar. He listened. He played it. He listened to his feet. He watched his game film and got better and got so good that he was paid to be on the road with a uh, somebody that does concerts for a living. He didn't take training. He did the work. So I'm not saying training isn't valuable. I think you should have training, but too many of us use training as a crutch and excuse to not do the work required. All right, next. So after you do the work, you develop the skills. Let's talk about how do we actually convert leads? So I think there's two parts. And, and I, I want to break this down so we really understand. We've got database management and then we've got pipeline management. Database management should be done weekly. Or sorry, should be done daily. Database management should be done daily. I define database management as how do you go from lead to appointment? That should be in your database or your CRM. We use follow up boss for that. Every single day, you own that. Every single day. That's from lead to appointment. Then you have pipeline. Pipeline is from what from the appointment to actually closed. And we audit that weekly. And I think it's really important you separate the two because I will promise you if you do this and you go back and you look at your pipeline because you've never known that you're supposed to have pipeline management, you will find people that fell through the cracks that you spent all this time, energy, and effort working on to get from lead to appointment and then you gave up on them. Then you forgot to follow up. Happens all the time. So it's important that you have those two points, right? So now you've got the standards. You've, you're no, you know how to manage the database. Let's teach you how to convert the leads. So how do you convert the leads in the database? I actually um, I actually made a post recently on, on social media breaking this down. I'm going to kind of read from it um, to give like a perspective. And I'm really going to, I'm not just going to read the post. I'm going to unpack depth of lessons that are hidden inside of this post. And so the post goes, so you had a motivated lead on the phone and you didn't set the appointment. But that's never happened to you, right? Let's be honest. We've all gotten off of a phone, off of phone calls and almost immediately realized that I should have said this or I should have done that. So how do we improve that skill? Yes, it's a skill that can be learned. First, you've got to be extremely self-aware. Watch your game film. Listen to your calls. Highlight the things you did well. Look for opportunities of things you could have done or said differently to get a better outcome. This is a skill that can be developed over time through reps, just like a muscle is built in the gym. Next, seek out someone that is proven, not a theorist, to analyze with you. Ask for their perspective. Ask for their honesty on things you did well and things you can improve. Be open-minded and coachable. Honestly, most of us give up too soon on a phone call. The league gives us what you call what you call an objection, and we give in and hang up on the lead. My words there were very, very strategic. What you call an objection, and you hang up on the lead. Yes, I said what you call an objection because what most of you confuse sales skepticism with an actual objection. Read that again and learn the difference. Do you know the difference between an objection and sales skepticism? You know how many agents, if I ask them, what is the number one objection they get? You know how many of them say, just looking as an objection? I don't know about you guys, but just looking is not an objection. I, as a real estate agent, am looking for people who are just looking for real estate. That is my ideal avatar. That is not an objection. We just haven't acquired the skill to overcome that simple framework of a phone call. So stay with me here as I keep unpacking this. 
So for example, yesterday I coached one of our newer, newer agents through a scenario. I overheard her talking with a lead that called into our office and asked about a property. This is a huge lesson for all of us, so pay attention. I'll start with what happened and pivot to the coaching conversation and the lesson. So she spoke to the lead and the lead asked about, a asked about a specific property. The agent immediately said, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, that home is no longer available. Is there anything else I can help you with? Then the agent pivoted quickly, recognizing that she unintentionally ended the phone call and asked about their timeline. The lead said they were hoping to buy in about six months. The agent then gathered my, minor information on what the lead was looking for and rushed off the phone saying, great, I'll send you properties that meet your criteria. End of conversation. Does that sound familiar to any of you? Not judging, but if it does, let me help you. Now, many of you may have heard me say, the quality of the lead is determined by the skill set of the agent. I'm going to say it again. The quality of the lead is determined by the skill set of the agent. I firmly believe that if that lead had been on the phone with me, I would have set the appointment. And it's not that I'm wonderful. It's just I've developed skills over time and know how to pivot those conversations to overcome those very, very simple frameworks of scale sales skepticism to actually set the appointment with the client. To expand, there are no bad leads, just bad agents. And if that hurts your feelings, you may, you, you may just be one of those bad agents. Maybe not, but also maybe. No worries though. Let me walk you through some recommendations that can help you build that skill. I'll break down my thoughts, parts of my conversation, coaching and lessons I share with this agent. By the way, this agent wasn't wrong. She just hasn't developed the skills. Kudos to her for doing the work required so she can develop the skills and being open to coaching. That's what winners do. Back to the lessons. Never, ever, ever deliver bad news first on a phone call with a lead. Ever. That's how she started. Oh, unfortunately, that house is under contract. Don't ever do that. It's pretty simple, but I hear it all far too often. As an example, if a lead asks you about a specific property, even if you have all the information in front of you, don't just give them the information. You are not an order taker. You are a salesperson. It's time you started acting like one. Now, I'm not saying be salesy, pushy, et cetera. I'm saying be a salesperson. There's a big difference. Instead of just giving information, ask questions. Great salespeople ask great questions. Write that down. So here's some questions that I would recommend you ask. While I look that up, what was it about this home that caught your eye? Engaging questions, right? Another one. The home you asked about is in blank area. Is that the only area you're looking to buy in? I'm continuing the conversation. As an example, this is old sign call strategy, but this applies here. Even if you know this home is already under contract, even if you know all the information, I'm not saying be shady and pivot way too far to keep it going and guide them along. I'm saying ask one question. Keep this conversation going. Have a sense of understanding before you give them the information. How many of you have given them that information and then click, they hang up the phone? I believe our responsibility as real estate agents is to help guide people and lead them through the biggest financial purchase or sale of their lives. In order to be a guide, in order to be a leader, you need a depth of understanding of their situation. And you can only do that by asking great questions. All right, back to, back to the lesson here. This is your opportunity to build rapport, to build trust, build relationship, and gather information so you can help lead and guide them. By the way, your leads, clients, or community, they don't want to be sold. They don't even need to be helped. They need to be led. Be the leader that they need. When having a conversation with a lead, be sure to ask great questions. Great salespeople ask great questions. You have two ears and one mouth for a reason. Listen twice as much as you talk. Understanding the lead's timeline is a crucial step. For example, this lead mentioned, thinking about buying in six months. Here's where the agents could have pivot, agent could have pivoted in that moment. Six months? Awesome. 
just out of curiosity, what is happening in six months that makes this move a priority for you and your family? Tell me more. What else? Understand their situation. Quit trying to sell stuff and build a relationship with people. Gather a depth of understanding. Ask great questions and stay out of the way. Rule of thumb on timeline, by the way. The timeline they tell you, cut it in half. This is another diversion tactic to get you out of their way because that you have not demonstrated enough value or worth yet and they don't think you can help them or they don't think they need your help. By the way, motivation is the most important part of any conversation with the lead. Stop focusing on the property. Why are we asking these great questions instead of just giving them the information? We want to understand their motivation because then we can help them. The better understanding we have, the better we can help and serve them. You see, the heart chooses and the mind justifies. Connect with the human. Understand their needs and wants. Ask great questions to unpack their emotional reason for buying or selling. Heart chooses, mind justifies. Quit speaking to the logics of their brain and speak to the heart. Speak to the motivation. Speak to their emotions of why it's important to them. This is in all caps. Agents, stop focusing on the perfect property. The perfect property does not exist. And if you want to argue with me, here's the story I tell every lead that's, that's focused on the right pro perfect property. Mr. And Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, I understand you're looking for the perfect property. And I would love to find the perfect property for you. I'm just curious. If I were to give you an unlimited budget, you could build your dream home. No restrictions. Anywhere in the world. No budget. You get to build it. You design it from the ground up. And you move in on day one, your dream home. No budget. Again, no budget. You move in. Can, can you visualize yourself there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome. How long before you find something about that house that isn't perfect? Oh, the first day. Exactly. So us trying to find the perfect property with a budget, with restrictions on location, is very unrealistic. That doesn't mean I don't want to do my job and find you the right property that checks the boxes for you and your family, but I want to adjust our language of perfect because perfect does not exist. Would you agree? You eliminate that up front. Cool. All right. So many agents get stuck in the hamster wheel finding a needle in a haystack. And it's simply because they are an order taker and have no depth of understanding and no depth of relationship with the lead. If you are stuck searching for the perfect property, in most cases, it's because you did not do the earlier parts of this, this dialogue well enough. You don't understand their motivation. You don't understand their emotion, the emotions of why they're trying to buy or sell. Yes, sometimes buyers are in need of a home that is hard to find. But even in those times, unpacking these lessons will make those 10 times easier. Agents, stop hanging up on leads. Never end a phone call with, I'll send you properties. Or, let me know what you think. If you end any phone call with a lead without clear next steps, I count that as a hang up. And you hung up on them. It is not their job to follow up with you. It is your job to follow up with them. Stop being lazy and putting the ownership, the responsibility, and the work on the client. That is your job. I hope you can use this post techniques, principles in your business and watch your conversions go through the roof. Most of you don't have a lead problem. You have a conversion problem. I'll put the link to that post in the show notes so you guys can go back through that. But I want to unpack that with you. There's so much there that I could go through, but you guys get the gist of it. I want to get your expectations right. You don't need more leads. You don't need better leads. You need to follow up with leads better. So that leads me to my next point, intentional, intentional follow-up. Guys, the fortune's in the follow-up. As a team leader, as a coach, I get to see behind the biggest organizations in the world. And there's one thing that those organizations have in common with their top agents. That is average contact attempt per lead. Like clockwork, the agents that are winning at the highest levels of the high, biggest organizations, the most successful agents in the world, have more average contact attempts per lead than the ones that are not. 
Agents, you don't need to call more leads. You need to call less leads more. It's about building depth of relationship. As an example, we implemented a top 100 in our organization. Our agents have no more than 100 leads in the world. We have like 50 something thousand in the ponds they have access to, but the ones they own, no more than 100. As soon as we implemented that, our, produ our production went through the roof. We even had some agents take it as far as actually our top producing agent this year, reduce it to his top 20, no more than 20. Less sometimes is more. All right. So also I'll send this to you. I got to run. Um, but I hope this has been helpful guys. I'll, I'll send this to you. I'll put it in the show notes. I think it's really important as you're having these follow-up conversations that you're guiding and leading them through the process. And so one of the things I help coach um, my agents through is, are you actually having follow-ups with leads that are valuable? Do you know their motivation? Do you know what they're looking for? Do you know what's important to them? And so I'll make it as a lead magnet here. It's our checklist to see if they're worth following up with or not. Or if we have, so it's, I think it's six, it's six items. And let's say we have two of the items checked. One of them being, do we have a buyer's representation? Another one being, do we know their motivation, right? Like, do we know their top five must-haves in a home? Those sorts of things. We have a checklist that we'll share with you that you can print out and have at your desk. And you can say, do I have these things with this lead? And guess what? If you're having a follow-up call and you don't know what to say, if you only have three of the six items checked, have a conversation around getting number four checked. Move the needle forward, inch by inch, call by call. Move them closer to their goal. That is your job as a real estate professional. So I'll put a, uh, there's, there will be a link to that that you guys can download if, or you can reach out to me. I'm happy to send it. We'll put it in the show notes. As a reminder, it takes what it takes. Guys, we can't delegate our push-ups. The work is required. And the work is how you build the skill. Hope some of these tactics and this mindset helped you. I'm going to close on this. Which agent's going to win in today's marketplace? Agent A that sits back, whines, complains, plays the victim, says it's not fair, and doesn't do the work, doesn't build the skill. Or the agent that takes action, knowing they don't know everything, knowing there's unknowns, but they're willing to do the work and figure it out along the way. Which of those agents wins in today's marketplace? My last question, which agent will you be? Guys, as always, I appreciate all your support. Uh, this podcast is a movement to give back to this industry. I hope you found this valuable. If you did, continue help growing this. Our last, our last podcast last week was actually our most downloaded in a long, long, long time. So it's continuing to grow and grow and grow. So I hope you found this week valuable as well. If you did, share with a friend. Send this to someone that will help. Um, and if there's anything I can ever do for you guys, I'm here to be a resource. Please don't hesitate to reach out and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for listening.